Hey, it's Freiberger, and I'm about to show you a sample episode of a show that we do on MotorTrendOnDemand.com that's called Roadkill Extra. It shows up every single weekday. It's got stuff like outtakes from shows, behind the scenes stuff, tech tips, you name it. You can see them all with a free trial at MotorTrendOnDemand.com. All right, here's their new hood. It's a fiberglass hood from a company called Glass Tech. You might notice this is just a plain, flat 67 Camaro hood, but not for long. We're gonna have to cut a hole in it to clear that, our tunnel ram. And on top of the hole, in a totally retro vibe, we're gonna glass in this Grump Lump. It's modeled after the scoop that was on Grumpy Jenkins' pro stock car back in the 60s, so It'll definitely have the vintage vibe we're after. Retro, and I'll show you how to do it. Okay, the thing is, people worry about, hey, where am I gonna put the scoop? You have gotta figure out where you're gonna bond it on the hood. Now, it's actually pretty easy because you know it's gotta go on the center line as far as side to side. So the only thing you have to worry about is where do you want it front to back? So there's really no measuring involved at all. I'm just gonna set it down, make sure it's flat, and reach in here. Okay, even with the scoop all the way back, I've got plenty of clearance to the front of the carburetor up here. So I can bond it on all the way at the back edge of the scoop, or I can move it some point further forward. So what I'm gonna do is just model this on the original Jenkins Pro Stock car. I'll look at some pictures online, try to copy that. That'll set the placement front and back, and problem solved. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to do here is I'm going to reduce the thickness of this flange. If you look at it, I mean, it's almost two inches, and it'll put my blend line way out here on the flat part of the hood. I want to be closer to the radius. That way I can blend it in a lot easier. So I'm just going to mark it with a little electrical tape to get a consistent width. And it doesn't have to be dead nuts precise. Just blending way out here, you're going to have a whoop and bump and then it'll go up into the scoop. By the time this is bonded on, I'm gonna bond it from the inside and in between the two panels, so that'll give you plenty of strength. There's no problem at all there. I'm waiting for the magic word. I kind of dressed it up a little bit where I'm a little off the line using a long porting carbide. It's a cast iron crosscut bit. Works pretty nice on fiberglass. Okay, that's pretty good. Now here's the important part. You still have a pretty big step right here when you're going from, I mean, you've got the thickness of the glass, which is probably a little over an eighth of an inch. So you're gonna have to fill that or you're gonna have a lump or whatever when you blend that in. So what I like to do is I'll come in here next and bevel that all the way across. And don't worry about chewing this up along the flange a little bit because this is all gonna get glassed in when we, uh, after we bond it. So. so the first thing I'm gonna do is find the center line of the scoop. I'm gonna mark it on the front and the back because these flanges are not exactly equal and there can be some variation in the way the shape of the scoop is, but the center line has to meet the center line of the scoop. All right, so I've got the scoop in position. It's screwed down to the hood with these tech screws. Now the trick is you want to close the gap as tight as you can between the hood and the scoop. And the way you do that is you drill it through like normal for the screw size, but then you come back on the scoop side and you enlarge the hole on that side only. That way the threads of the screw are not going to grab this preventing it from pulling down to the hood. So that's really important because when we bond this, these screws are going to be our clamp and uh, finished off just by outlining the edge with the marker and that's gonna give me a guide on where to cut the hole. So I'm gonna take this back off. Next time you see it, we'll probably be bonding it in permanently. 
All right, it's time to cut the hole. We're outside because I don't want fiberglass dust to fly everywhere. I'm just going to use the zip wheel and I'm going to put a little radius in the corners. So I'll probably finish that off with the jigsaw. <laughs> That's how you get it done. Okay, well here's the moment of truth. I'm gonna bond the scoop onto the hood and I'm gonna use this, Dynaglass. It's a short strand fiberglass filler. It's pretty tough stuff, but I was afraid it might go off a little too fast, so I thinned it out with some fiberglass resin. That's also gonna make it squish out a little bit better because I don't want to build extra thickness between the flange and the hood. So the final thing is, not to over catalyze it. So I'm going to squeeze out just what I think is going to be about right. And I'll give it a little bit of fiberglass hardener, polyester resin. Ugh. Okay, now I've just got to work fast. I'll give it a little more just for luck. You don't want it not to go off, so it's really nerve wracking. I think that will work. You don't have to worry about being sloppy because it'll squish out. And you can always scrape out the excess when, when it's semi-hard. You really don't want to let it get super hard because it, you'll be sanding for days. Wow, I'm really doing a good job here. Kind of impressed. You want enough thickness to fill any kind of gaps? There. I'm going to call that good enough. I've kind of laid a little bit of a tape guideline. Just get me roughly. Oops. You don't want to do that. Luckily, I missed. <laughs> you know, that's the thing. It can be kind of slippery. Put it down right where you need it. The tech screws. Oh, yeah. See the squish? Coming out as I pull down the tech screw, that's what you want. It's perfect. The only thing that can go wrong now is not enough hardener. In which case, it'll just never dry. This kind of thing always gets me really nervous. All that preparation, all that time, all that forethought and planning can just all go down the drain. Well, I think it's probably dry enough, so I'm going to take the screws out. I'm going to scuff this down, give it another layer of, of uh, reinforcing fiberglass. And then we're pretty close. All right, that's looking pretty good. I'm going to give this a quick sand so it'll let the next layer adhere. And, uh, Onto bodywork and then paint. Well, you know, I like to use a little bit of cardboard to mix my filler on. A lot of guys say that's a no no, but old bad habits die hard. You don't want to overwork the uh, long hair. Once you get the long hair laid down in there, leave it alone, walk away. Well, it looks like the uh, long strand filler is pretty much dry, so I'll don my safety equipment, personal protection equipment. And what I'm gonna do is hit it with the, the long board. It's an air-powered inline sander, and I've got 36 grit on it. It's really aggressive, but I just want to knock this down and then I'm going to just slather on some regular Bondo and it, this thing will be done, ready for primer. Well, 
Well, I've got the long strand filler pretty well roughed out, so that stuff is really, really hard to sand. But this lightweight body filler, it's a whole different ball game. This is what I'm going to use to fill in all the imperfections. That long strand basically is a reinforcement. I've got it level, not really smooth, but level. This is where I get the smooth. I'm not going to be shy about the application here. I'm going to apply it on there pretty good. Well, I'm pretty happy with the way the uh, body filler lay down. It's nice and smooth. I've got to wait till this dries up nice and hard. Then I'm going to sand it down, get it nice and level. Once that's all done, primer over the whole thing, more sanding. But thanks to Movie Magic, it should match the yellow on the Crusher Camaro and be ready to install next time you see it. If you need more Roadkill Extra, go sign up right now.